Hello guys, once again it's Matt, and today we have another video. Let's thank our members first over Lenny 11B, Cuts and Crazy Boo. Thank you for being the full crew members, it helps a lot. Uh, thank you all the Fox Bat and Fish Bat members. Make sure to be a member if you want to help the channel and subscribe. And let's continue with the video that I uh, that I did. Basically, it's a continuation of the video that I did yesterday. If you haven't checked that out, check it out. I explained basically on a basic manner for trying to everybody understand how a radar works and some of the systems work in the radar. You know, like push Doppler, like how the lock works, like the search works, like everything in the radar department in air-to-air -air radars work in aircraft and trying now to implement that video together with how to actually use them in War Thunder. I see a lot of people having troubles with how to use the radar, you know. Uh, you normally just fly around and then you use the short range to lock and stuff like that. And it is not very... It's not using its full capabilities of the radar, okay? So we are in the F-14, in the test flight, and we are going to talk about key binds together with the usage of the radar and on other aircraft as well because it depends some other aircraft have uh, different types of modes and stuff like that for example the MiG-23 has uh, the IST uh, the Mirage 2000 has different types of acquire modes so yeah so if you haven't uh, or if you at least want to check it a bit uh, check that video first that will help you understand a little bit more on what I am doing especially with the modes and how the radar is actually working okay so first things first, okay? So as you see, we have the radar screen there on the right side, and a lot of people ask me why it is a squared radar and not that kind of semicircle one that normally you have. It is an option, okay? So you go on options, air battles, and then you use the, um, the, the here, this little thing, use rectangular radar indicator. For example, if I turned it off, it's this type of radar that I think is just harder to actually see the target you could uh, in, in theory just use it uh, with a larger uh, radar scale as you see here for example it helps a little bit but not by much so I just advise you guys to actually uh, let me put in 100 and use the rectangular radar indicator is a little bit harder to understand where the it is you have to actually understand a little bit on how the radar is positioned but still it is a little bit um, um, easier to see the targets as you see here uh, you have a more you know general idea on how the radar is actually working you know uh, here's a kind of a semicircle there as you see here you can tilt to the radar and stuff but uh, I still prefer to use the other one just because of it's easier to see targets okay so this is the option that you have to actually uh, turn it on okay now the second thing as you see here, I'm moving the little thing there. Let me try to uh, show you with a target being basically locked. Let me turn around the aircraft. But basically, as you see, we have a target there. How do I select a target? I just select it with this little thing. I'm using the arrow keys. And as you see, I can select the target like this. Like this. Okay? See? I'm selecting like this and not by just using the other ones that it's target cyclic switching of radar uh, aircraft radars this way it is automatically on that target as you see you know it's automatically going for the target that it's showing and then you have to have a button to basically uh, switch between targets as you see let me check it is going to be yeah, it's, I'm using the lock button together with that, but still, it's not working. But you have to just put a button uh, on the search, on the, um, what is it called? Select the radar target to lock, you know. But I don't like this. So normally, I just use the target cyclic switching aircraft. Okay, you have to turn this off. And then, you will go for controls. And then you have to put buttons for these three things. Okay, you had this is for the horizontal, so this is for this. Okay, so you can choose the target. This second one is up and down in the sense of uh, distance. So 
if it's going up it's more distance that you're trying to lock and if you're going down it's less distance you know so a target right there would be at 37 kilometers right there would be in the middle like 18 kilometers uh, and here would be nine kilometers for example you see um, and then we have the last one which is the radar tilt control so this is for the radar to go up and down the antenna itself go up and down as you see look on the radar screen there you can tilt a lot up as you see here it's it's searching target right there see on the side of the little radar up there or downwards let's just move downwards the max amount see it's looking where is it it even disappeared but it is looking down as you see there and if you go up see up and down up and down up and down so that will control this so these three things as i said on yesterday's video uh, it will control the radar antenna being tilted to the left to the right up and down uh, and the distance for you to choose the target that you actually want or choose the where you actually want to just scan an area okay so if i want to scan to the la to the let me change the mode here to just to be a little bit easier for example i just want to scan right there as you see i can just turn it on for that and if i want to scan right there it turns again okay up and down and side to side okay and you then have a properly good way to actually just try to lock somebody that you actually know where it is or try to search for a pattern to know that basically you know then we have another basic thing we have the distance okay so uh, the scale you know this is another button that you have to face i mean i'm using these so you can copy i have these um, files my files on the discord as well so join that if you want to have it but yeah uh, change radar irst scope scale this will change the distance that you see on the radar so for example 93 kilometers 185 370 let me just increase this uh, so it's just the scale of the radar if you if an aircraft is at 30 kilometers and the scale is at 10 you will not be able to see the target so you have to have the proper amount normally i use 93 or about that 60 to 90 depending on the aircraft will normally suffice for most radars okay so yeah this is for the range of the radar as you see here the scale changes as well for example a target is there if i change to 10 to 20 19 c changes the scale changes where the target is on the radar's uh, scope okay another thing that it's very 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 important it's the search modes okay so many types of aircraft have different search modes so this is what it is for example here you will have plenty of search modes depending on the mode that you are actually just using so for example here is a more narrow search mode so that you can actually look for a target quickly remember on the video that i told you about the radar takes time because it, it's actually emitting on the whole pattern that it needs for example here it takes a lot of time just because it has to scan a very large area you know uh, that's fixed with PESA and ISO radars, but we don't have that yet, so it takes time for the radar to do the whole scan. The older the radar, normally, th it, the more time it takes to scan the whole area. Uh, if you want, you know that a target is in, in a specific position, like here, for example, I just need to scan where he is right there, so the scan pattern can be slower, so that I can have faster, as you see there, faster updates on where the radar the the um, on where the target is for example here the radar is being the the target is being uh, uh, updated very quickly and here you lose and then you get back again so it takes a lot of time and sometimes that means that you will lose the target so these patterns help you find that depends different uh, radar modes have different types of search patterns as you see so it depends on the radar modes that you are using but still okay another type of mode that you can use it's the different types of uh, actually 
radar modes that you have. You know, many types of radars have different types of modes to deal with a certain situation. And that's basically what we have. So basically we have here the mode. This is the actually mode because uh, the other thing that I told you about, it's the search mode. Now we have the actual mode, okay? And here we will have, for example, the normal search that is seeing the ground clutter, as you see, it doesn't have any type of filtering for ground clutter. Then you change the mode, it is in pulse Doppler, it's filtering everything on the ground. Then in the F14 and uh, F4J, for example, F4 FGR2, for example, we have the PDV as well, which is the pulse Doppler velocity, which is just measuring the velocity of a target. And that clutter there on the radar is actually the blind speeds of the, the radar, not the, the ground clutter. So if an aircraft is on that speed, um, you will not see the target. So for example, uh, you will probably not see the target here because it needs to be in a certain velocity. So as you see here, for example, uh, on the uh, bottom part of the radar, you will see the scale of zero kilometers and um, the... Uh, top of the radar screen you have the 10 kilometers range you know but then if you change for the pvd pdv which is the post doppler velocity you will see less uh, minus 1476 kilometers per hour and then up there 7300 kilometers per uh, 380 kilometers per hour this is the speed okay this is the speed that the target needs to be so you can actually see the target Okay, for example, here we don't see the target because he's less to those speed. He's not flying in those speeds. So you will not see the target. Okay, it's a common thing in pulse Doppler velocity radars. Um, so you will see that, as I said, the F4J is like that. The F4 FGR2, FG1, the APG59, basically. So, yeah. And let me try to get some speed. It helps a bit. Waiting for him to actually turn to me. Once he actually has a positive speed, as you see the right there, he's actually coming towards me, so he has a positive speed, and he's turning to me, so and I'm accelerating, so the speed is getting actually faster, as you see, so it's got been going upwards, because right there, it's le more speed, okay? As you see here, the faster we go to the target, the upwards it will be, okay? Um, another mode that we see, obviously, it's the TWS, which is the track while scan. Uh, it is a pulse stopper mode, but it is doing the thing that I told you about that it was going to do on the um, on the yesterday's video, okay? So we will look at the target and keep searching. Look at the target and keep searching. Look at the target and keep searching. And with that, it can actually tell uh, some information for the Phoenix to actually where kind of the target is, so that if it, the Phoenix actually will have... Um, a properly good information about it. As you saw right there, the TWS tried to maintain a lock like it was a normal lock, you know. It will um, basically change the tiltness of the radar and whatever it needs to actually be locking the target, okay? Something that people don't know about and get mad about the TWS because sometimes it is just changing the radar automatically. That's because of uh, the way that the radar works. It's trying to maintain where the target is. This is actually a very good thing and it helps a lot. And as you see, it is the same pulse doppler that we see on here and on here. As you see, I don't see the target. That's why. Why? Because of the blind speeds. Okay. So the TWS, the search PD, you're not just. I mean, it's it, it's the same uh, pulse doppler mode. You're just not having the same type of uh, information on the radar screen that you can have, for example, here. That you will see that it is in the uh, blind speed speed okay so yeah as you see here for example I'm seeing it on the normal search but in pulse doppler I don't see it now I see it because it actually has a positive speed as you see here okay so always remember that the scale and the radar screen is just a representation of what the radar is seeing not the actual I mean it normally changes modes but it is normally just that okay Let's see, other things, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about another aircraft as well, okay, but um, on the F-14, um, that's basically it. Obviously, you have some minor stuff, like, for example, the search modes on turning on um, and off the radar, basically, if you click that button, the radar will be turned off. 
Uh, and we have the acquire modes, the normal acquire modes for dogfights. If you click this, so this is the acquire mode. Oh, the acquire modes, uh, let's see, uh, right here. Sit between raid. No, no, it's not that. Sorry. It's here. Radar beyond visu wing visual range. So if you click this, it will go from the normal be beyond visual range to the within visual range that you just have to point to the target. You can click this button to change from PD to normal. Uh, this is the, where is it? Uh, this button here, the mode, you can actually change it from pulse Doppler to normal mode. As you see, the normal mode will have the ground clutter. It will be able to lock. And then sometimes the pulse doctor, it will be, but if the guy is notching, it will won't be. Okay, so have that in mind. And if you click the button for uh, the search uh, mode, the search mode of the radar, not just the mode, the search mode, it will go from other par patterns. So for example here, oh, sorry, a wrong button. Here, for example, we have another pattern. And here we have another pattern of search, you know. So we have different types of modes for dogfights, for example, we have, you are turning to the target and then it locks a little bit quicker than uh, having um, the, for example here, it's quicker, right? Because you are just turning, for example, and then you point to the target, it's already locked, then to have, for example, uh, this and having to actually point the nose there and then trying to lock the target, you know? So I it is a little bit faster, so remember, you will have the normal acquire mode for dogfights. Then you can change the the mode for pulse doctor and normal mode, and then the search mode as well for a more broad, for example, for dogfights or upwards for dogfights as well. Many aircraft will have that in the future, but yeah. Um, another thing that I wanted to talk about is obviously the lock. When you lock a target. Um, target will just be like that. It will automatically go to the tracking mode, the TRK mode, and it will track the target. It will do whatever is possible to maintain the beam of radiation that I told you about yesterday's on yesterday's video uh, on the target. Okay, and with that, you will have um, basically, uh, for example, here. Let me go for TWS. I will select the target click the button to lock, it will go automatically to tracking post doctor, for example. If you are in the normal mode, you can change it as well, okay? Look at the, the post doctor and normal mode. Post doctor and normal mode, okay? You can change between them as well. Uh, and that's basically it, uh, the way that you need to, to just learn. It will, the beam of radiation will be going for that target, uh, and the missile will try to go for that target as well, okay? Uh, so let's see some of the other aircraft to see different types of things that you need. And here we have another aircraft for you to know, the MiG-23. All of the MiG-23s have this, okay? Uh, the 23M, the MLA, MF, the MLD, every single one of them beyond the BN that doesn't have a radar, obviously. But, for example, here you will have the same buttons as you see to look around, to go up and down the radar, the distance, okay? But the MiG-23 radar is very unique, so I have a video on that if you want to check it out, because it is very, it has different types of modes than anything else. I mean, you has the MTI instead of the pulse doctor, as you see, and then the MTI itself, you can actually use it. It's for ground, uh, basically close to the ground kind of situations. Normally, the normal search mode will already filter a bit of the ground clutter, enough for you to shoot missiles uh, beyond uh, 500 meters from the ground. Uh, so, but it depends on the altitude that you are as well, but still, uh, it is an aircraft that has different types of modes. For example, now, if you are past like 2,000 meters, the modes are different. If you change the mode again, it will do the search look down, which has another filtering method for looking now, and the range can actually be increased until 90 kilometers, as you see. So it's different, okay? Depends on the radar, it's different. And the main difference between this radar and the other ones is that it has a mode as you see right there, uh, that little glass thing uh, under the nose there, it has the IRST, okay? It will have basically an infrared search and track, which will have the same possibilities as a normal radar to look uh, to different, uh, to the right. And I mean, it has only two scan zones, as you see here. 
and you can change the up and down as you see same as the radar and side so you can basically change where it is looking and you have the normal so search mode that you can look up and down as well so it has different modes basically it doesn't have range obviously because it is an infrared searching track you will not be able to see anything like that it has still an acquire mode for that as well so remember that we are far away from that saber but still uh, and yeah basically you just need to just change it um, on here let me uh, show to you switch between radar and IRST a lot of aircraft have this system like the F8 for example has uh, some of them has so yeah it's different okay and the tracking and everything else is the same this aircraft doesn't have another acquire mode for example but and uh, for example here we have another aircraft that has different modes for example it has TWS the same as the um, the F-14, the Vegan also has TWS, but as you see, for example, the speed of the uh, search is very, very slow compared to the F-14's radar. Uh, so, yeah, the basically, but in the TWS, obviously, you will maintain looking at the target at the same time, you know, uh, but in the normal search modes, it will take a long time to actually uh, change the, <laughs> the, the where the target is right even in the lower mode like this look at the amount of time it takes to just do that but still um, but here we have another mode for um, acquire for example we have a smaller one like this then we have a dogfight one like the F-14 and then we have a larger one because it's a larger one so yeah it depends very much on many things so yeah uh, I, ho I f hope this was useful for you to actually use the radar. Uh, I will be doing more videos on radars and how to do BVR with radars and stuff like that in the future. So make sure to subscribe and let me know any doubts. Maybe I will uh, have the time to actually um, answer this time. But still, um, make sure to, to check that out, uh, the other video that I told you about. And check the other videos that I'm going to do about that as well. I have videos showing how to use properly the AUG-9 uh, and the RP-23 specifically, so check that out if you are flying those aircraft. And I, and I think I have one on the Vegan as well, I'm planning to do more videos like that because each radar has its own features. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed and I see you guys on the next one, bye guys.